hope I hope you're saying what I what I think you're saying. In the first shots, we see a waiter preparing the cafe for working shift. He is a man named Sam, who suffers from mental retardation. Chief named George informed Sam that he had to go urgently. Sam rushed to the hospital as his girlfriend Becky went into labor. Soon a baby girl was born. Sam took her in his arms and named her Lucy. After being discharged from the hospital, Becky and Sam walked to the bus stop, but the woman ran away from him and the baby at the first opportunity. Sam was left alone with the little daughter. At home, he took care of the baby as much as he could. Since the daughter could not be left alone, Sam took her with him to the supermarket. Lucy cried at night and even woke the neighbor. Annie, who lived next door, asked Sam where the girl's mother was. Sam replied that she said she didn't want that kind of life and left. The neighbor asks Sam to come to her apartment and explains that the baby needs to be fed every two hours. Sam is very sleepy, but he listens carefully to everything Annie tells him. Sam began to cope well with his parental responsibilities. One day he was visited by friends who had been getting together every Thursday for eight years. They all have health problems. The friends are interrupted by Robert's mother, but he asks her to pick him up at 9 o'clock sharp. The guys believe that Lucy will grow up to be very smart and beautiful. Sam began to take Lucy with him to work, but it was obvious that working with a baby in his arms would not work. So Sam asked Annie to watch his daughter, who could already pronounce some words. Several years have passed. Lucy grew up as a very smart, inquisitive girl, more than anything in the world, she loves her dad. One day Lucy asked him if her mother would ever come back. The girl also noticed that her daddy was different from all other people, but that didn't embarrass her at all, because other daddies didn't go to the park with their children. Lucy had to get ready for school. Faithful friends helped Sam with everything. He didn't have enough money for his daughter's shoes, so his friends contributed a few dollars, too since they all love Lucy so much. Sam reads a book to her daughter before she goes to bed. Tomorrow is her first day of school. All the children have been tested on elementary knowledge, and Lucy has done very well. Lucy's classmate Connor became friends with her, and he immediately noticed that her father was mentally retarded. In the evening, Sam helped his daughter with her homework, which was hard for him to understand. Once in a cafe, a girl of easy virtue spoke to him, who invited him to relax. Deciding that Sam wanted to use her services, a policeman arrested him. But almost immediately the police realized that Sam was completely harmless. He was sent to the school psychologist, who expressed concern about Lucy. Tests showed that Sam's level of intellectual development is at the level of a seven-year-old child, which meant that he cannot raise his daughter. At home, Lucy began to worry that she she's stupid, but Sam convinced her that she was not. Lucy had learned to read quite well, and her father liked to listen to her. It was very difficult for Sam to communicate with new people, in contrast to the smart Lucy, who could easily find a common language with others. Because of this awkward situations arose. Lucy was beginning to notice more and more that her father is different. He is like a child, which is why her classmates make fun of him. Today is Lucy's birthday, she is turning seven. Sam decided to surprise her. However instead of the girl, a child welfare officer showed up. When Lucy arrived, a classmate told her that Sam is supposedly not her birth father. The girl ran away, and child welfare decided that Sam was unable to fulfill his parental responsibilities. The judge decided to separate father and daughter for the duration of the trial. Sam will only be able to visit her twice a week. When Sam hears this, he cries, for he loves his daughter more than anything else in the world. His friends consider that Sam should hire a lawyer as soon as possible. Robert found a suitable advertisement in the newspaper. Sam came into the office to see the lawyer, Rita Harrison. She was very confused, but she listened to him. Rita has a lot of work to do, and she bluntly told Sam that he didn't have enough money to hire her. Rita tried to send the client out, then Sam showed her a picture of his daughter. To get rid of him, Rita asked him to leave his phone number her secretary. Sam continued to work as a waiter. In the evening he paid another visit to Rita, who again shrugged him off with a far-fetched excuse. The next day Sam bought a present and went to see his daughter, almost too late. He promised Lucy that he would be sure to get her out of here. They didn't know that child welfare officers had been watching them the whole time. Lucy said she didn't want any other daddy but him. Sam came to Rita's office again. Since her colleagues were constantly teasing her about her greed, she agreed to be Sam's lawyer for free so she wouldn't lose face. In a burst of joy, Sam hugged her. It turned out that Sam has a court order to be examined by a psychiatrist today. Since Sam doesn't know which bus to take, Rita had to drive him in her car. The psychiatrist asked him about Lucy. 
Later, Sam bought a used answering machine so that he and his daughter could leave voice messages for each other. The lawyer told Sam to make a list of people who could testify in court that he was a good father, despite his disability. Rita talked to all of Sam's friends, all of whom also suffer from intellectual disabilities. A very good father. Later, the lawyer told Sam that the court hearing was in three days, and they didn't have a single suitable witness. They need to find someone for the judge to believe. Sam went to Annie for help, but she refused to get involved. On the day of the hearing, all of Sam's friends gathered in the courtroom with placards, demanding Lucy's freedom. The psychiatrist confirmed that Sam could not be a parent, but Rita harshly refuted her arguments. During a break when Rita wouldn't let Sam pay for her at the cafe, he realized that she had the same opinion of him as all those people. Rita said it didn't matter, because the most important thing for them was to win the case. Sam was very slow in paying for his order, holding up the line. A famous doctor, whose mother also suffered from mental retardation, was invited to court. In spite of this, she was able to raise an intelligent and successful daughter. The prosecutor is not convinced. He believes that it is dangerous for Lucy to be with her own father. Sam continued to visit his daughter at boarding school. Lucy lied that they were allowed to go to the park together. Sam soon uncovered the deception, but her daughter still didn't want to go back to boarding school. Even more, she doesn't want to end up in foster care. Father and daughter were having fun together. When Rita found out about it, she was furious, because if they found out about it in court, it would be a disaster. The lawyer asked the custody officer not to talk about it, because then there would be no hope. The prosecutor interviewed Lucy. The commission was amazed that the girl answered questions like an adult. It is obvious that Lucy loves her father very much. One evening Annie saw Sam praying. The owner of the cafe where Sam works was subpoenaed. George said only good things about him. Rita prepared Sam's friends to appear in court. Annie did come to speak in Sam's defense too. She appeared in court and confirmed that Sam is a good father to Lucy. The prosecutor was still not convinced, especially in the face of the fact that Annie suffers from agoraphobia. Rita brings Sam to her fancy house. Rita's relationship with her son Willie is not good, since she is constantly working, as is her husband. Because of this, the couple cannot pay attention to the child. They needed to keep working. Rita wondered how Sam would help his daughter with her lessons. That was what they will be asked in court. Sam will have to say that he had found a free tutor for her from a special social service. In Sam's opinion, Rita is a happy person, because she can play with her child at any time. But everything is not so simple. Rita and Sam rehearsed potential questions that the judge and prosecutor would ask. She also gave him one of her husband's suits. Now Sam looks very presentable. George decided to give Sam a promotion at work. Now he was not only serving plates, but also making coffee. Sam was unaccustomed to doing so many things at once, so he splashed coffee all over his suit. Late for the hearing, he entered the courtroom in a dirty suit. However, Sam answered the questions very intelligently. The prosecutor continued to apply pressure. He deliberately asked Sam difficult questions to make him doubt his own position. First and foremost, the prosecutor was interested in whether Lucy and Sam's opinion deserved a better father. Sam was ready to give up, for Lucy really deserved more than he could give her. Sam visited his daughter again at boarding school. He hugged her and wouldn't let her go, the teacher had to take Lucy away by force. Looking at this, Rita could not hold back tears. In the evening she hugged her sleeping son. After a while, Sam was going to visit Lucy at her foster parents' house, but he did not dare to approach. The girl was very upset, she didn't recognize the foster mother as her own. Sam became depressed. To stop being sad, Lucy started painting. One day Rita came to Sam's house, but he wouldn't open the door for her. The lawyer was outraged at this attitude, because she had jeopardized her career for him. Rita broke down the door. Unlike Sam, she wasn't going to just give up. She wants Sam to find a better paying, quieter job so he can rent a new apartment. Sam doesn't believe in success. According to him, perfect people like Rita will never understand what it means to be born like him. Rita couldn't stand it and cried, telling Sam that people like her also feel inferior and suffer from unfaithful husbands, nervous jobs, and a whole host of other problems. Rita hates herself for not paying attention to her own child. Sam put his arm around her, reassuring her. Now he began walking the dogs for money. Lucy's foster mother made it clear that she had no intention of giving the girl up, but she did allow Sam to see his daughter. The girl was very angry that the father hadn't visited her in a long time. Lucy thought he had forgotten her, so Sam showed her the letter he had written for her, even though it was hard for him. The girl forgave her father. Sam and Rita had another court hearing. 
the custody officer said that the girl's adoptive parents want to adopt Lucy. The lawyer doesn't think it's the end of the world, because Sam will be able to visit Lucy, but he wants his daughter back, by all means. Sam also told Rita that she should divorce her husband. Rita smiled sadly, answering that she wasn't used to throwing anything. Lucy was trying to adjust to life with her new family, and her father was constantly around, albeit inconspicuously. Soon he rented an apartment near Lucy's family. Of course Randy was not happy about it. One night Lucy ran away from home to visit her father. When the foster parents found out, they were shocked. Sam got a second job at a pizza place. Lucy kept running away from home to see her father. One day Randy tried to talk to her about it, but the girl still treated her very coldly. One day Rita came to visit Sam with her son. She told that she and her husband were divorced. Despite the difficult period in her personal life, she intends to bring the matter to an end. In addition, the manager from the pizzeria is ready to testify in favor of Sam. That evening Randy brought him Lucy. She apologized to Sam for everything. Randy realized that Sam is a good father, and more importantly loves Lucy. In the last scene, we see Sam playing soccer with Lucy and her friends. Rita, Randy, and all of Sam's friends sit in the cheerleading squad. Finally father and daughter are reunited.